Hey guys and uh, gals, Marcus from MWF Performance. Um, hot off of a full day of uh, testing and um, tuning at uh, RCHQ yesterday. I drove uh, drove in the morning, got there about nine or so, and then um, I didn't leave until seven o'clock. Even missed Super Bowl, still haven't seen any of it. Um, but I was excited about trying to get the GT. Uh, GT car back. I get a lot of requests for the um, for GT chassis, and uh, I think me and probably anyone that's ever raced this scale has a GT somewhere, <laughs> either in a box or cobwebs on it, or you know, threw it in the fire or whatever. Um, in the past, the car has been pretty uh, pretty uh, inconsistent. Um, it's super good, really really good, and then all of a sudden it's not. Um, I've always said it's pretty much the shocks that was causing the issue. It kind of has to be. Um, they were really short and uh, they didn't, they would dampen well, but you had to just stay on top of it. Pretty much had to grease the car every run or every other run to make it work right. And uh, even then, it still just was not consistent. Um, so, but it was popular. Um, a lot of people bought that car. So, um, as you all know, I've been working with the GLR for, I think we're over a year and a half now, um, exclusively on the GLR. And now that we have the uh, the new GTR coming, or it's already here for the most part, and uh, <clears throat> we have a lot of people with the GT, um, a few months ago I decided to, uh, I made a car that had the GLF front end, uh, also dual A-arm, and I did that to just kind of play around with chassis design and see uh, what the double A-arm would take as far as uh, the chassis being wide and where to put the weight at to make it feel right. Um, and I got pretty close with that car. Um, funny thing though, even the GLF, for some reason, when I put that on a 98 millimeter car, it was, it acted the same way. Every time you put, every time you put the car down, it was a different car. And on my F1, I never touched it in my car ever. I got, I, mean, I greased it once at nationals and that was it. Um, don't really get it. So fast forward to what we have now. Um, this is the GT. This is the MWX conversion. This is the first one that I have, uh, that I made. And, you know, we're kind of doing the same thing I did with the GLR where, um, you know, I want the car uh, to be stable and uh, just not have a tendency to traction roll. I mean, you know, for to make one of these cars traction roll, you really got to do some extreme stuff to, 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 to find that spot. Um, testing went phenomenal. It really did. Um, I got there pretty much car off the trailer. I didn't even do anything to it. I uh, had tall tires, tall new tires, as a matter of fact. Um, Setup wise, uh, it was just, uh, I think I had the, the Julia red, red front springs on it. And I had, I think I had purple GLR sides on it. Um, just wanted to get the car on the track and, you know, to see what it felt like. Um, pretty much immediately the car was quick. Um, I think, uh, you know, this, this layout got put down last week and this is my literally the first time on the track. Um, so I think in the first session I got down like 11.5 or something like that, which I think is pretty good for you know time of the day. And uh, I think their fast lap they got on um, uh, the day before, I think it was like a 10.9, maybe a 10.8. Okay, you know, no big deal. But the car was good. Um, had a little push in it. Um, felt really good, though. So I decided to just run a full pack, two packs, actually, the way it sat, play around with it. I did put another body on it and tried that. Uh, it seemed like the more aggressive the body I got, the better the car, the better the car um, felt, which is not typical for a dual A-arm car. Usually, you want a, a mild body so the car, the, the front end is not quite as uh, as edgy. So that's a good sign. Um, as the day went on, uh, I let um, Brian Fong drive it uh, pretty much right after I got there, maybe three packs deep. Uh, he liked it a lot. Uh, like I said, at that point, we're still pushing a little bit. And then uh, Alice got the car after I had made some more changes. I think I went a stiffer front spring on it and um, I went softer rear springs on it. Um, I think that was about it at that point. Uh, he got the car and I think within a few laps, he got down like a, 
Hey, man, you think maybe been a 10-9. He was really rolling with the car, and it still wasn't as fast as we think it could be for sure. Um, but we were both surprised. Uh, I think I got down to 11 uh, For reference, at that time of the day, my um, MWX, I'm sorry, the GLR, was like 11 flat. I was a little quicker than this car at that point um, for me. And then I think I went, I think I went like 11-2 in it, and then I think he went like a 10-9 uh, at that time, uh, which is fast. Um so uh, I was fighting at that point. The car kept having glitches and stuff. It was just really, I was having a hard time. I replaced two receivers, two servos, three speed controllers, and it kept glitching. My other cars wouldn't glitch. So I don't know. Even changed the model for the radio. I had have no idea what was going on or why it was doing it. Um, made no sense to me at all. Nothing electrically is the same on it, and it still did it. Uh, but anyway, so I spent a couple hours chasing that, which wasn't fun. Uh, never really got to go away. I think we got maybe three packs in more before I started acting bad again. So I, I don't really don't know what happened with that. Um, anyway, so uh, at the end of the day, um, Alex got a best lap of a 10.7. I think I got like a low 10.9. Um, but 10.7 is super quick considering, I mean, in all actuality, we had not touched this car not too, as far as like really trying to dial it in. Um, I did end up with uh, yellow front springs, yellow side springs, um, the caster block, uh, which is this piece right here. Uh, this is just a prototype piece uh, for now. But what this does, it allows you to add more caster. And on this car, uh, adding more caster keeps the car dead straight going down the straightaway, which is, of course, what you want. And I know in the old GT, I ended up having to run toe in. Uh, to get it to, to track straight. This one I've actually got toe out and it still is just laser straight down the straightaway. It doesn't, doesn't move anywhere, <clears throat> um, which is really good. Um, that's kind of it for now. Oh, no, it's not actually. I'm lying to you. Um, I did make a new shock relocation kit uh, for this car. And what I have done is I have moved this shock location here. I moved it from here more forward so that it's directly over the pivot ball on the bottom on the, on the chassis. Okay, so when I moved that forward, obviously I had to move the, uh, the front shock point, which is right here. And at the same time, I got rid of the um, screws that hold the rubber band, which means now you can take the battery in and out without taking the shock off, which is nice. Couple of, oh, one other, some more things. That's, uh, when I do get around to selling the chassis, uh, it's going to come with the FPM. Um, I don't like that notch that they have in there. So notch is gone. Car, the chassis will come with an FPM. Costs a little more, but you want it anyway. There's a black one. Don't know what color I'm going to go with yet, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, I think that's it. Um, car is going to be really good, I believe. Uh, it is good already. Um, it likes aggressive bodies, which means the protoform body is going to work great on it for sure. I've got a couple of Marka uh, aggressive bodies coming uh, on the way right now, too. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's good. I like it. Um, you know I love my GLR. But this is definitely a car you want to have in your arsenal because there's always different track condition. It handles the bumps way better than the GLR does, expectedly. Um, but it's very, very smooth and planted. Um, I feel like I need more power, to be honest with you. I'm trying to figure out how to get <laughs> a little more horsepower out of it because it it's like driving a super stock car right now. It just doesn't. It just we're we're full we're full pinning it in, in the infield. So. We'll see what happens. Uh, anyway, until next time, um, subscribe, and uh, I'll talk to you all later. Bye.